uh, we have developed technology for targeted resequencing of uh, coding regions uh, of, the, of the entire genome. And we have used this technology called uh, targeted sequence capture for resequencing uh, entire uh, gene coding regions of wild MR wheat and domesticated MR wheat. Uh, the material I'm standing in front of right here, and you can see some darker heads throughout the plot here, uh, is derived from wild relatives of wheat. Uh, in this case, uh, it is containing wild alleles on all three genomes of wheat. Wheat is a hexaploid species, so it has three full sets of chromosomes, uh, each really originating from an original grass species. Uh, and we wanna go back into that pool to be able to find new genes to help us develop better wheat varieties for Kansas uh, that have better disease resistance, better drought tolerance, better heat tolerance. And so this is a project that we've been working on uh, for a few years and trying to start to transfer these genes into adapted material. There's already some evidence that there are genes here for drought tolerance. I have a student who's been doing some screening uh, for heat tolerance out of these materials and there's some that have very good tolerance to high temperatures. When we start talking about dealing with climate change, highly variable climate, having the ability to deal with all these stresses is really important. We know from some previous work uh, at other places that there's some resistance to fusarium head blight. There's been resistance genes to, uh, to stripe rust that have been transferred out of the wild emmer. So there are a lot of different things there. We've done some preliminary screening. We've identified some lines that potentially have uh, wheat streak resistance. Uh, so there's a lot of different value there and it really goes beyond just the commercial production side of it. We think there's a lot of potential value there also for consumers. The wild emmers will go up to an excess of 30% protein. Uh, so there's high protein. We also know that the wild emmer has about twice, the, you can find some that have about twice the antioxidant capacity that the domesticated durum has. And the durum wheat is what the domesticated form of emmer is. Uh, so we know there's high antioxidant capacity. We know that they accumulate things like iron and zinc at a much higher level. So we can start to talk about nutritionally superior wheat varieties that can come out of this material. So we think that there's real value there uh, as well as for our consumers, as well as helping to ensure production in an increasingly variable environment.